Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John. This report is for the 10th, and well, nothing out of the ordinary uh, took place the other day. We came right on that midline in between, so when we get this large gap between 100% and 76%, uh, I like to add in that EVM. Uh, normally, I keep it off just to prevent clutter on the chart, but it's important because when you have that big a span, there's always going to be the fills. We were looking for this positive extreme fill, uh, which was right in the middle, but below uh, worst case scenario, which would have been the 46.61, which would be a full fill of the positive extreme that began right there, looking at the bottom of that chart. And that was because we still had signed under red, so at this particular stage, everything was still bullish wasn't until we got the uh, DOC spread conversion started here with the beginning of uh, uh, DOC green, which is midterm buyers moving below cyan, and we were below the negative 13. That's where we expected weakness. We got it, filled that in. When I say weakness, though, it's this inherent idea that, yes, we've got a softness, but before uh, short-term buyers uh, build up enough strength, and then it's just a question of can they turn uh, and build momentum with midterm and long-term buyers, which in fact did, and it was perfect timing within the expectation of new fund money coming in from the fifth on. That range usually is when they've got it, and it's like boom, and sure enough, we got the giant move from it. A little consolidation move within there, a little bit of uh, fill back within the big candle move. Perfectly expected. We look for at least a third to a half uh, within that range for normal, healthy behavior. And that's what we got, uh, which things are pretty much on autopilot, barring any sudden shock waves. Um, but for all intents and purposes, nothing dramatic has changed. From an NQ standpoint, you can see without there, it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, but it did the same thing. We were looking for a positive extreme fill. This was the second to last. And it went a little further. Didn't quite make the full beginning of it. Uh, but the NASDAQ had experienced a bit more softness in between and makes up for it, uh, balances out in the end, but uh, definitely positive from an MBI reading. Once Magenta got over white, it uh, was a clean run, and that literally took place uh, early part. Uh, we saw it on the intraday charts once we came below the 76, moved back above, definitely turned positive, and boom. Treasuries. Still outside the norm, but it's given back some of that uh, improving yield. But I think the market is still, you're better off being in stocks than you are treasuries at this particular point with that uncertainty. And why get the lower yield when nothing has really happened yet? Uh, because things could reverse if inflation moves. And that's where we look at oil not doing anything. So that's not really too much of a concern at this particular stage. Uh, the healthy range, the longer it stays there, the better it is for the economy help absorb the uh, increase in price. That's enough to stabilize euro in these levels uh, because the ECB is crippled. They can't do anything unless the Fed does it. So the Fed hasn't actually cut rates. The ECB can't actually cut rates. They can talk about cutting rates, but they can't actually do it, even though they should do it because their economy is stopped. From a gold standpoint, no activity there because there's nothing building the pressure. We had big excitement for Bitcoin. A false report on Twitter suggested that the ETF had been approved. That created the spike, which immediately was denounced, and that moved back. And so um, interesting because in the past, these kinds of things would have created massive changes. Uh, this wasn't much. Uh, we just stayed back into that 176 range. So it gives you a little idea of the maturity that's developed within a Bitcoin uh, level. Uh, ETH, which is interesting, uh, had seen a bigger improvement and it had been lagging quite a bit uh, to Bitcoin. Net. So a little bit of catch up there uh, from an ETH standpoint. From our 50K, it was clean from the buy down at the bottom. When we had the turnaround with Magenta over uh, yellow, even though there was a little bit of weakness with the white still leading. Um, we had shake on gold rising up, and that's usually a bullish uh, push there, unless it we're already in a decline, in which case then it uh, accelerates the decline. So it just depends on where it takes place. But in this particular narrative, we were already starting the turnaround and massive push. We're in this consolidation phase of it right now. So that was all clean from that standpoint. Uh, intraday started off weakness, but as soon as the open came, bounced up, leveled off, and then off to the races. Filled back, uh, well, we had a couple of positive extremes right in through here. Those got filled. And then we had uh, some testing of those lows. 
from the market and now we're in the uh, hyper acceleration stage uh, was a little massive increase here in the uh, European session uh, filling back uh, the big part of the positive extreme which is right there off here and still has a little bit of potential uh, to fill down uh, to the beginning of it but uh, overall beautiful ranges clean nothing to shock anything at this particular stage so as it stands we just continue to follow the readings and go from there trade well if anything relevant happens i'll put it up on the skype chat have a good one